Genocide is complicated. The legislation that the government created cut us off from our traditional foods, our traditional practices, included taking our children. And our people forgot how to practice our traditional gathering and, and food processing methods. I knew that wild rice had a lot to do about our traditional lifestyle. I didn't know how to gather it. I didn't know how to turn it into food. And so I learned it from some elders about halfway to Ottawa in Ardock. You guys are good. I wanted to do something to help our people, the health of our people, our culture, the wealth of our people. And so I started a little company named Black Duck Wild Rice. And it's turned into some kind of like a community scale business so that it's not all about making a profit. There's, a, there's also a large educational component to it. And we go to educational institutions and we talk to kids. The schools come to our place and, and actually get to see what we're talking about. Make more rice. Money is a big barrier. How to run an operation without any funds is, is difficult. Lack of protection. There is no protection for wild rice. Also, lack of knowledge. It's mainstream society or the colonizers who uh, don't have any knowledge of wild rice. They think it's a weed and it's grown in front of their cottage and so they want to remove it. But the word is getting out and people are more aware. And with that awareness, wild rice is benefiting and our people are benefiting, but it's not nearly where it should be. If we want to put the rice back in Rice Lake, it's going to take communities, not just one community, a range of communities to facilitate that. But I remember the first time that somebody came into the rice bed and was gathering it on their own and they were going to take it home and make it into food. That was one of the dreams I had about when I first started putting the seeds in the lake. When you see that, you know that there's a chance, there's hope. The wild rice is waiting for people to come and enter the garden because people are such an important part of that garden. More and more, food connects people who want to make their communities better places to live. Their work creates an economic value, but as you can see, these community leaders are more interested in environmental and social well-being. The Social Economy of Food video series shows what that looks like on the ground and how these leaders are changing their communities. <laughs>